You know, if there's one question I get asked more than any other, more even than if a cannibal ate a clown, would it taste funny? That question would have to be, Mark, what are the objective differences between Kentmere 100 and Ilford FP4 Plus black and white film stops in terms of granularity, tonality, consistency, and ease of handling? Today, we're going to try and answer that question. So I recently had the opportunity to visit Bunbury, one hour south of Perth for work. Called a city, but really it's a big regional town of 188,747 people and a few bottlenose dolphins. The 2021 Australian Census also tells us that 10.2% of the population suffer from arthritis and 13.3% of people over the age of 15 live in a de facto marriage compared to 12.2% of the rest of Western Australia. Bunbury, Bunbury, Bunbury. You could be forgiven for thinking that the name Bunbury comes from the small pieces of faecal matter that get stuck in your anal hairs. But in fact, Governor James Sterling named the town after Lieutenant Henry William Saint Pierre Bunbury. At least it's more imaginatively named than its neighbour and rival, the bustling town of Bustleton. So visiting Bunbury seemed like an opportune time to grab my camera and pit these two films together in a creative duel to the death. Now, in the blue corner, we have Ilford FP4+. Plus. In the other blue corner, we have Kentmere 100, both low to medium speed films, both from Harman, the people who make Ilford film stock. So what is the difference? Mostly price. Now, there isn't a lot of information about Kentmere other than it being a budget version of Ilford film stock. Harman themselves say that they might have skimped a little bit on silver and also some people claim it has a weak to non-existent anti-halation layer or poorer quality control. Truth or myth? Was Kentmere just not sprinkled with the same amount of Ilford pixie dust as FP4? It was time to find out. Now, as an academic with over 20 years of teaching and research experience, I understand the importance of objectivity. I understand the need to apply rigorous research methodologies to remove bias and control extraneous variables. And you know what that means. The same camera, the same lens, same settings, same lighting, same subject, same compositions, and the same processing. Of course, knowing something is important and actually doing it are not the same thing. To be fair, I did have the same camera, this impressive piece of 1980s industrial design, my Nikon N2020, and on it the 24mm Sigma f2.8 manual focus lens. I had my uh, Nikon 28 to 85mm f3.5 to 4.5. This is also uh, an autofocus lens, and the and 2020 does have kind of a prehistoric version of autofocus on it. And the final lens, another autofocus lens, my classic 50mm Nikon Nifty 50 f1.8. So a variety of lenses shot over one evening and the following morning under changeable conditions, including indoors and outdoors. I also shot the Ilford at ISO 100 rather than the 125 box speed and developed for the same time as the Kentmere in direct contravention of the soup Bible that is the massive dev chart. Is this a fair comparison? No. Is life fair? No, it's not. Life is cruel. It's unpredictable. Now, shut up, Timmy. Eat your gruel before I lock you back up in the cupboard under the stairs. But I digress. Let's see how we got on. 
When I arrived at the salubrious lodgings that is the Quality Lighthouse Hotel, I was disappointed that it was raining and that my room's poolside view consisted of a sliding door onto an enclosed atrium that was a little bit more like a festering cavity that smelt of pool chlorine and desperation rather than a burgeoning oasis. But hey, I'm an optimist and resisting the temptation to strip down to me budgie smugglers and frolic gaily in the temperate shallows like a horny porpoise, I quickly set to rendering the scene on celluloid. Firstly, the Kentmere. Fortunately, after about half an hour and 20 frames, the rain cleared and I started to explore the local coastline. Because of course, what are you going to do with a beautiful sunset other than render it in creative black and white? The next day dawned, as it has a habit of doing, and I figured I would make most of the short time before work, and what better way to herald the birth of a new and beautiful day with a high-pitched squeal of a drone buzzing around people's rooftops to set the scene.
So, what of our challenge? Did Kentmere claim a brutal and bloody victory over Goliath? Or did FP4 just quietly stomp on it and wonder if it had trodden in some dog shit or something? In truth, I can't really tell the difference. Now, full disclosure, I may have screwed up the Rodinal dilution a bit. The negatives definitely seem a bit thin, but you think that that would exaggerate the differences. Looking close up, I couldn't really tell which was which. Neither are particularly grain-free, and both tend to produce fairly neutral tones with moderate contrast and plenty of highlight and shadow detail. And Rodinal is always going to produce a fairly sharp and grainy image. I had previously used Kentmere 100 during the early days of COVID and shot several socially distanced rolls of it walking around the suburbs with my dogs. I've always been impressed by it, actually. It's hard to describe. It has a kind of creamy butteriness about it that I love. It doesn't have the contrast and the fall off in the shadows that you get from one of those kind of brutal street photography films like Triax, but then neither does FP4. They both have plenty of latitude. They both have the ability to put the creative power in your hands rather than feeling that you're struggling with the film's inherent characteristics. And unlike some Eastern European brands, yes, I'm looking at you, Fomapan, I've never had any issues with quality control with either Kentmere or Ilford films. Other than the accidental underdevelopment, I haven't pushed or pulled either film significantly, and perhaps that's where the differences will start to show themselves. But for now, if you're looking for a good medium speed black and white film, I recommend you get whichever one you can get for cheap at the time and just go out and shoot photos. Photos of your friends, photos of your families, photos of your dogs, streets, landscapes, photos of the weird shit that's just hanging around your house for some reason. That's what I do. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and comment. Have you used these films? What have you found? I'd also love to hear what things you might like me to review other than what I've done today. I have way too many cameras and lenses and films, including things like this from 1939. I need limitations. Some constraints I think would be good for me. I promise I'll review all of them without bias and with an appropriate level of scientific rigor. Or not. Till next time.